let's have a bit of a Royal Ascot chat, shall we? Because I've, I've got you uh, there, Matt, for a little while. So let's uh, cast our eyes forward to Royal Ascot. Great day the, to kick off the meeting, of course, with a real kind of rat-tat-tat -tat of Group 1 action. We'll, we'll have a quick canter through one or two, shall we? Shall we start with the Queen Anne stakes? I seem to remember you saying to Chris Richardson, this is easy, isn't it, for Cheveley Park? You send in spiral over the 10 furlongs and audience is now your miler. It looks like they might be leaning that way. We'll probably see audience here on, on his own. Yeah, absolutely, Sean. I, I think that's the right thing. I mean, at the end of the day, it's easy to forget because she's a four-time Group 1 winner over a mile and the straight mile, but um, Inspiral was a Phillies Mile winner as a two-year-old. I mean, if you're a Phillies Mile winner at a two-year-old, most of those do stay a bit further as three-, four-, and five-year-olds. She had to stay really strong in the Breeders' Cup to see off Warm Heart. I mean, on that run, you could almost say she could go up to a mile and a half rather than go back down to a mile. And I also think the bend will keep her interested. So with her, I think it's absolutely the right move. As far as the Queen Anne's concerned, um, look, Sharon, everyone's got the form in the book. He's going to be bang there, isn't he? If he's going to be in the first three or four, Sharon, there's no doubt about that. But I like the look of Big Rock still. Um, people will say, oh, he's a heavy ground bully, and obviously he goes very well in heavy ground. But when he was second to ace impact in the British Jockey Club, the ground was good that day. The, the argument that he can only operate in some light conditions is, is ridiculous for Big Rock. And if you want an outsider in that race, I still keep a little bit of the faith with Mal Joom, who ran in a Mickey Mouse race on the comeback when front running. Front running is not his thing. Um, he will be held up, and I suspect he will run a lot better. He could have run um, uh, in Europe this weekend, but they're, they're going to run him in the Queen Anne, and I suspect he's overpriced at around 16 to 1. So those are my two against the field in, in the Queen Anne, Sean. What do you make of this Big Rock move, though? Big Rock and Blue said they've, they've moved yards, haven't they, from, from Christopher Head, who did so well, so brilliantly with the, uh, those horses in the blue and white colours, to Maurizio uh, Guarnieri. I'm, I'm a bit concerned, Matt, that whether, whether any of those horses are going to be as effective this year. Well, Big Rock obviously ran an absolute shocker, but it did stumble out the boxes and then was rushed up. Um, so I'm happy to forgive him that run. But he ran a shocker. There is no doubt about that in the lockage for the comeback. Um, Blue Rose Sen, I didn't think ran bad at all on the comeback. In fact, with a clear run, I think she'd have gone quite close to winning, to be honest. So I'm not worried about her. Look, at the end of the day, Maurizio doesn't have the um, excitement of a young Christopher Head, the, the kind of interest that Christopher Head has, and Maurizio doesn't have, you know, the Group 1 winning experience of Andre Fab, but he has trained lots of winners in his time, so uh, the idea that he just can't train is a bit ridiculous. I'm happy to give him another chance with Big Rock. And the other thing, of course, is we've ditched La Maitre, who quite simply just don't, doesn't seem to be able to ride in this country, and uh, we've got the Belgian ace Christophe Sumio. And, um, you know, the draw will be interesting, won't it, Sean, though, whether Big Rock is drawn away from audience or close to audience. That will be a, uh, an interesting factor. Yes, we'll have to wait and see on that. I could talk about this for hours, that race. I think it's fascinating. Audience, I think, was underestimated going into the lock-in the more I think about it. I'll throw one more in, because I had a chat to Oliver Cole earlier. Royal Scotsman, not a certain runner, but he bounced back to form no. at Epsom uh, last time out, so I like the look of him. He'll be a big prize, much, much too big a prize, I think, in the Queen Anne Royal Scotsman. Another one who didn't run his race in the lock -in. We've got what we now call the King Charles III uh, stakes, of course, the King Stan stakes. I'm not sure how good our sprinters are, um, Matt, which is encouraging me to look to some of the overseas raiders. What about you? Well, there is a chance that Big Evs is very special. Um, maybe, even though we all know Mick Appleby is an outstanding trainer, but maybe the, there is a Mick Appleby factor that you're kind of thinking, can we really believe this? But he's a Breeders' Cup winner, and he's come back with an absolute bang. There is absolutely no reason why Big Evs can't be a special horse. Uh, but I agree with you, and I think most people would agree with us by saying that the sprinters, both five furlongs and six furlongs, are a very ordinary bunch. And to use the cliche, the old Kevin O'Ryan cliche, well, the, the Tony Mullins cliche at the Cheltenham preview nights, they beat each other every other race. Uh, Tony always says that when he hasn't looked at a race. Um, <laughs> and I think people are right. Um, I think there's value with Twilight Cools. Now, people would just laugh at that. But Twilight Calls ran well on the comeback, has run in this race the last two years and finished second and fourth. Ryan Moore is already jocked up. I don't think Twilight Calls is a sort of 14, 16 to one shot. So 
that will probably be my selection in the race each way. OK, I'm going to throw in Crimson Advocate, I, although I think James Dawes is going to be on the other uh, Waffenen horse by the look of it, but Crimson... I mean, Crimson uh, Advocate cannot win, Sean. <laughs> I mean, if you're betting that kind of selection, please open up with me and have as much as you like on because you know she's not going to win this excellent excellent I, I'll, I'll open an account very very soon uh, <laughs> let's move on and squeeze in a bit of st james's palace uh, stakes as well while we've while we've got you here where we've got the, the the guineas rematch basically is there any reason why the english guineas form will not hold up um i don't think there is no i mean richard hannam was very quick to say rosalian will be better round a bend but of course while that might help Rosalian, Sean, I think most people would think it would undoubtedly help notable speech. So, you know, I don't think it makes any difference. In fact, I think going round the bend will be more in favour of notable speech than Rosalian. Um, he knit round Kempton as if he'd been going round bends all his life. The only factor with notable speech is that come to this race, Sean, the opposite advantage that notable speech had at Newmarket, which was loads of runs this season, slightly is negated and that would be the only thing that you could say is in favor of the others in other words very rarely do you have a horse having three runs before the guineas notable speech had that will some of the others improve i'm sure they will but i'm, I'm very dull here I'm, I'm all over notable speech i think he's outstanding Fair enough, fair enough. I was looking at the Paul Jones stats and dual Guineas runners, horses that ran in the Guineas at Newmarket and in the Irish Guineas have a good record, which could, could bring Rosalian closer uh, to notable speech. That's a good look at day one with Matt for Royal Ascot.